Naruto, 10 Things Fans Learn From Kakashi Hayden Parts of the world that had been ignored to this point were brought to light, and one of the movies was made canon. Light novels are a great way to both fill in gaps of time and provide greater depth to characters that wouldn't otherwise see it. Kakashi Hayden does a little bit of both. It shows what the world of Naruto looked like after Madara's defeat and how Kakashi came to become the sixth Hokage, the whole book leading up to that point. Because of that, there's a nice bit of world building done in those pages. Parts of the world that had been ignored to this point were brought to light, and one of the movies was made canon as the blood prison is directly referenced. 10. How Money Affects the Ninja World this is the main plot point of the book as Garyo and the Ryu Armament Alliance are trying to free the world from the need for money, seeing it as nothing more than a source of corruption. Those within the Alliance all have backstories that tie into this, making Naruto somewhat sympathetic to their cause. It's an interesting plot point, one that can be felt in the real world as well as the fictional one. Rarely does a shonen ever focus on the economic system of its world. 9. How Technology Began to Evolve The world of Boruto is one that's far more advanced than anything in Naruto, and it's a bit jarring at first since there's little explanation as to how they got there. Kakashi Hayden explains some of it, namely with the Tobishakamaru, an airship that was going to revolutionize travel through the world. It's another key element of the entire novel as the ship's existence could lead to a spread of unemployment through the land of waves leading to more who believe in Garyo's movement. 8. Creation of Seasickness Fist Few ninja are as innovative as Mike Guy, the man able to create a fighting style out of just about anything. His latest creation is Seasickness Fist, which is much like the drunken fist. It harnesses their queasiness from motion sickness to become unpredictable in combat. He uses it against Regio, a member of Garyo's movement and a skilled ice user. It manages to keep his opponent at bay, even if rather gross measures are taken to do so, leave it to Guy to weaponize Puke. 7. How Tough a Job Being Hokage Is There are glimpses of it in the series before Kakashi Hayden, but usually, they end in self-sacrifice, such as what happened to both the third and fourth Hokages. Rarely are Hokages shown in a position where they need to make a tough call that affects the lives of others. That's what Tsunade is forced into when the Tobishakamaru is hijacked and heading for the blood prison with loads of blue fire powder on it. She's forced to give the order that it be destroyed if it breaches the border of Iwagakure. 6. How vast the impact of Madara was. His failed attempt at bringing peace to the world via infinite Tsukuyumi hadn't gone unnoticed, nor did his feelings that the world was one filled with hate. Those same feelings were a drive of Kahayo and Reihio, the two primary antagonists of the book. The death of Kahayo's child weighed heavily on her, but even more than that, it was the fact her son was shunned after protecting a friend from the very same hornets that killed him. The continued use of the cycle of hatred was a nice touch for the novel. 5. Suicide Bombs Exist Towards the end of the novel, it seems like the duo has a change of heart towards their plans, fitting the passengers of the Tobishakamaru with parachutes to get to safety. In reality, they are filled with blue fire powder and are set to detonate and they get near the blood prison that is holding Garyo. Even by Naruto's standards, this whole scene is beyond dark. It's one thing for a villain to kill others. That's been done plenty of times. Using them as unwilling suicide bombers is quite another. 4. Tensions between villages still exist. The main basis for Tsunade having to make the call to sacrifice the passengers of the Tobishakamaru is due to Anoki, the third Tsuchikage threatening to bring the ship down himself. 
It shows that relations are still tense at times, shown by the fact that Kanoha felt the need to hide the creation of the Tobishakamaru in the first place. A fact that didn't remain well hidden as Anoki already knew. Showing he was keeping tabs on the other villages. 3. Kakashi Finding His Resolve to Become Hokage Much of the book is centered around the conflict between Kanoha and the Ryua Armament Alliance, but the secondary plot was always Kakashi coming to terms with the fact that he's ready to be Hokage. It's the novel's biggest arc, Kakashi getting constant cold feet despite his face already being etched into the mountain. By the end of the book, he comes to terms with it. He accepts the position. Knowing that soon the next generation will surpass him, something he wishes to see. 2. Kakashi's First Act as Hokage Kakashi's first act as Hokage is sparing Kahayo's life so long as she accepts the position of warden within the blood prison. It shows the depth of his character that, after everything that happened, he was still willing to see the good in Kahayo, much as Naruto did with Abito and Nagato. It drives home the overall theme of the series well and gets Kakashi's reign as Hokage off on the right foot. It would have been all too easy to just kill her to save face, but he's never chosen the easy route. 1. Kakashi's First Potential Romance Art by Ralyindi Kahayo is one of the first characters Kakashi has seemingly taken an interest in and had she not turned out to be behind the attacks. It may very well have gone somewhere. Kakashi's lack of a partner is often a subplot of the novel, hinting at the fact that Kakashi is afraid of commitment, and that's why he won't become Hokage. It's even played off as a joke at the end of the book when everyone from Naruto's generation is constantly interrupting Kakashi as he's trying to read a letter from her. 